Am I the a-hole for refusing to give my parents my address? I, 24, female, am one of two kids. My older sister, 28, female, was the golden child and honestly, I feel bad for her. My sister was a prodigy. She skipped three grades, was gifted in both academia and athleticism, and my parents made her life hell. Her schedule was full. School, extracurriculars, sports, music lessons, dance lessons, etc. When I was very young, I was jealous of her. Then I turned 10 and started feeling really bad for her. She wasn't allowed friends as they would hold her back. Free time as she could have the rest of her life to enjoy after finishing medical school, or even the freedom to choose her future career, or her own hobbies as it was all planned for her to maximize her chances to get into Harvard for pre-med and then Johns Hopkins for med school. When she graduated high school at 15, almost 16, my parents approved us because they couldn't allow her to go to college on her own. So we left Virginia to go to Massachusetts. I resented them so bad then. But I felt even more sympathy towards my sister because for years she has been dreaming about finally having some freedom while in college. They continued with their intense control over her life. I graduated high school back in 2016. Then in 2018, I left the whole country. That was how much I hated them. I moved to France, went to school here, and I'm currently working here. When my sister got into med school, they still maintained their controlling attitude. Then sadly, in late 2019, she suffered a drug-induced psychotic break. To this day, she is still institutionalized because it developed into full-on schizophrenia. When all their hopes they had hung on her ended in nothing, because of them, she started taking drugs because of how stifling they were. They tried to do the same for me. Sadly for them, I was already a self-sufficient adult on the other side of an ocean and they had no control over me. They are my sister's legal guardian, so I couldn't cut them off. They are exactly the type of people who would limit my contact with her. And lately, they have been pestering me to give them my address. Apparently, they want to visit me and get to know my boyfriend. I refused and keep refusing, but I also feel a bit of guilt. Them knowing my address does not mean that they would be dropping in every weekend. They live in a completely different country, and my refusal is making my mom very sad. Also, I have a lot of friends telling me that it's unreasonable. So, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Your parents sound like dangerous and manipulative people. I was day low contact, not the a-hole. I literally can't. If I don't call at least every other week, they will have me removed from the list of people allowed to contact my sister. They have told you that? If they have made such a threat, that is manipulative and just awful. More or less, if I don't call often enough, they would accuse me of not caring about my family. So there is no need for me to pretend to care about my sister. Here's the thing. They need you more than you need them. What's going to happen to your sister when they pass? I would be afraid that they're trying to reel you back to force you into being her guardian when they no longer can. In addition to having you live out all the dreams your sister can't for their gratification. Stay far away. Don't let them back in, even if it means you are removed from your sister's list. Right now, they're emotionally blackmailing you. Imagine what they could do if you let them back in. Not the a-hole. Go no contact. Hire a lawyer to sue for the right to visitation and communication. Save any messages indicating that they're using visitation for blackmail or retribution. You never have to set food in the country. Let the lawyer deal with it as many states have some degree of visitation rights for adults under guardianship. Sorry you have parents like this, but you can't ever give them any control over you. If your sister was of sound mind, I'm sure her former self would tell you to let her go rather than get under their thumb. You can harangue them with lawyers to put their actions as a guardian under a microscope. Try to contest their guardianship. It isn't cheap, but you can dedicate yourself to breaking their control, make them miserable, or get them to capitulate. Sounds better than hiding or letting them win. Next story. Am I the a-hole for throwing my niece out of my house? I, 48 female, have a beautiful daughter, Amelia, 17 female. I'm a single mother because Amelia's father left before she was born and she is my whole entire world. Amelia is also a teen mother to my beautiful grandson, Owen, one male. I'm obviously not proud of her for being a teen mother, but I'm extremely proud of her for how she is handling everything. She is an amazing mother and she is still doing very well at school. She is dating Owen's father, Raymond, 17 male, who is a lovely kid too. They all live with me in my home and I provide for them financially with some support from Raymond's family. 
I'm a lawyer. And I'm lucky enough to be able to work from home most of the time so I care for my grandson during the day while Raymond and Amelia are at school. When I have to go into work, Raymond's family looks after Owen. Recently, my sister called and asked me if I could allow her daughter Stephanie, 19 female, to move in with me. It's difficult to find a place to live in our city, so I agreed to let her move in for free. I'm very big on family taking care of each other, so I didn't want to charge my sister's daughter rent. I immediately noticed that Stephanie was being weird about Amelia being a teen mother. She'd make tasteless jokes, and I immediately took her aside and told that I wouldn't tolerate any sort of teasing. I've hired a tutor for both Amelia and Raymond just for extra support, and when Stephanie found out, she rolled her eyes and said they wouldn't need one if they had just been responsible. She also said that it was rewarding bad behavior, but I told her that I like to take care of my family, just as how I allowed her to move in for free. Then I realized that Stephanie was taking some of Amelia's clothing without permission. When she first moved in, I told her that in my home, we ask for permission before take other people's belongings. So I was pretty annoyed at it. Amelia asked Stephanie to return a shirt that she had taken and she refused and said that Amelia didn't need it back because she didn't fit into it. Amelia did gain weight as a result of pregnancy and breastfeeding and it's made her very insecure. It was a shirt she wore pre-baby and she keeps it so she can use it to motivate herself to lose weight. I told Stephanie to return it immediately and apologize, but she refused. We got into a massive argument that resulted in me packing her bags and calling her mother to come and get her. Everyone in the family is now bombarding me with phone calls calling me the a-hole for kicking her out. I fear I may have been too extreme, but I could have tried to sort it out before it got bad. Am I the a-hole? So your freeloading niece comes into your rent-free home, bullies your daughter, steals her things and your family think you are the bad guy for packing her bags? They are having a laugh. Tell them to feel free to take her in if they feel that strongly. Not they whole. I wonder what is Opie's sister saying about her and her daughter behind Opie's back. Because niece has no respect for Opie and her daughter. And either she is a very horrible person or she picked up some things from her mom. Have a list with all the family members that have bugged you about this. Offer them to contribute to the niece. Make it public and leave it at that. There's family and then there's leeches. A little bit of salt will get rid of the ones that are stuck on your back. Like that idea. Online GoFundMe and forward it to them inviting them to donate publicly. Slash put their money where their mouths are. Not a hole. Die on this hill, OP. Stephanie's an entitled brat and also a thief. You were generous to her letting her move in and she's done nothing but disrespect you and your daughter. She's corrupting what would otherwise be a healthy environment for everyone else. Well, a few years from being relevant, also not something the baby will need to grow up hearing and parroting. Not day whole. You handled yourself with grace, patience, and love. Seriously? Well done. You were very gracious to let your niece live there for free and have the opportunity to get a set up in life. You set clear boundaries and she trampled all over them. You also gave her ample time to shape up. Furthermore, you didn't let the nastiness towards your daughter go unchecked. Simply put, you made all the right moves, and you kicking her out was definitely the right move. I would venture to say she is jealous of the support you give your daughter and her success because of it. Enough so that it blinded her towards appreciating what you gave to her. She really shot herself in the foot. Next story. Am I the a-hole for selling my truck that I promised my nephew 10 years ago? I had a classic Chevy that's blue and white that I bought over a decade ago when I was a teenager. It meant a lot to my friends and I, as throughout our college years, I was like their dad friend in a system of chosen family. It meant a lot to me because before I fixed it up, it was the truck I slept in when my parents kicked me out. I promised this truck to my nephew 10 years ago. I didn't come for much, but I found myself blessed with a good house and a wife I absolutely adore. We are having a baby much sooner than expected and I want money to send the kid to the nice daycare that I pass on my way to work. The one that teaches sign language and works with animals slash gardening. I didn't tell my wife. She knows I love my truck. I didn't tell friends. I sold it and made a good bit of money to put a down payment on a more reasonable car for a baby. The kind my wife has wanted as her car is beat up and she deserves a new one. Then some for daycare. And some money for college if the kid wants to go slash ends up going. Or just starting as an adult money. My friends got upset that they won't be riding in it anymore. 
worried I won't be hanging out with them anymore and think my wife put me up to it. My wife cried and told me I shouldn't have sold my truck. That she doesn't need a new car. Not true. Her blinker doesn't even work. Lights pushed in. The poor thing is barely holding on. She swears it's cosmetic, but she just regularly struggles to accept gifts. My nephew, on the other hand, is devastated. I showed him mechanics on a truck, spent time with him after his father died by driving him around and taking him to museums, camping in that truck. I tried to tell him it is time for a new chapter, that I made that promise when I was his age and that I need to do this for my own kid. Now my sister refuses to stop calling me a family traitor. Am I the a-hole? Edit. 1. I was 16 when I made the promise. I was kicked out and disowned. It was financially on my own and homeless. 2. I asked my nephew twice if he wanted to buy it. January and June warned him that it wouldn't stay for sale long as people have made offers and the offers kept going up. 3. The Head Start YMCA tuition-free daycare got shut down and replaced with a charter school for older kids, therefore leaving two private school daycare options. The nice co-op daycare or the nice international language daycare? The other YMCA is too far for me to bring any kiddo to before my work shifts. I'd like for the kid to experience daycare at least one or two days of the week. Edit. I took care of my nephew and his sisters growing up and throughout my 20s. I made sure they went to orientations. I gave them baths. I held them when they had the shakes as babies being born with withdrawal from drugs. I held my nephew and made sure he got therapy after his dad died. I made sure he got into college. Some have suggested that I tossed my nephew aside for my real child. No. I parented him when I was a child and made mistakes that my 26-year-old self wouldn't do. I see this as older brother, him as my child, doesn't get the truck because it needs to be sold so younger sibling gets daycare. Top comments. Not day whole. What am I reading with these comments? Yes. It sucks you went back on a promise but you have a wife and a new child to think about. I absolutely think you did the right thing, as heartbreaking as it may have been. I know, right? He was 16, 17 there when he made a promise. As an adult now, and with all the stuff that needs doing, it made sense to sell the car. Plus, he says in a comment that he offered to sell it to them and they turned him down. I hope he's not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Things change. You have a child on the way in an uncertain time where we are headed to recession. Your children come first over extended family and other adults. I don't know why you are getting so many YTAs here, but your wife is about to require tens of thousands of dollars worth of medical treatments over the next nine months. And childcare is expensive, along with all the other costs of infants like big ticket items, cribs, etc., needed for safety reasons. Diapers, wipes, and formula, hundreds a month. A safe car for transporting a newborn is a necessity, not a luxury. Thank you for this. She'll be the one driving the baby to and from daycare, and I don't want her doing it in an unsafe car. I also watch her not ask for much and make do what she has. And it just felt weird having this beautiful truck guys regularly beg me to sell, while she didn't have the very practical family-friendly car she wanted. I started looking at the budget and, yeah, freaked out a little about how we could ever possibly afford that. And since my parents cut me off young, I have to figure this out on my own. The hospital? Expensive. The even somewhat decent daycare? Expensive. The nursery? Expensive. I have a good job but it can only be stretched so far. I admit it got spooked and should have kept asking my nephew or maybe found another way to afford stuff. I rushed the decision and should have asked my partner. Last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to take down a video of my kid's father dancing at my brother's wedding? My children's dad and I got separated and divorced two years ago. We're in good terms regarding co-parenting. And since he's close to my brother, my brother had invited him to his wedding. Perfectly okay with me, since the kids were thrilled to get extra time with dad. I was taking a video of my mom and my kids at the wedding and posted it on my Instagram. Hours later, I get a call from my ex yelling about my camera catching him dancing drunkenly in the background. I said, so what? He told me he's getting engaged to his conservative girlfriend soon, and if her or her conservative family saw him in this video, then there's gonna be trouble. I thought that was silly. He demanded that I'd take it down, but I declined. He insisted, saying he was technically recorded via my camera and he did not consent. I called him ridiculous and refused to take it down. 
has gotten the kids involved now, which got me mad and made the argument escalate. Mom is saying I should take it down, but I feel like he's trying to control my social media activity. Am I the a-hole for refusing? He said that his girlfriend can and will see it via the kids since they're with me on social media. Ask yourself this, is that silly video worth destroying your co-parenting relationship with him right now? Because he is absolutely in the right to demand you take it down if he's featured in it. No one says you have to delete it off your phone, so the memory isn't gone. But it's petty of you to insist it should remain online. You're the a-hole. Also, a wedding tends to be a private event, not public. He's in his right to ask for privacy. Not really. He has no reasonable expectation of privacy, especially not when it's generally expected there will be photography. The point about damaging the co-parenting relationship stands, but I doubt that relationship will survive the ex's new relationship anyway. Everyone sucks here. He had no expectation of privacy at a wedding, where between guests and a hired photographer, cameras are all over the place. On the other hand, it's one video. Would it be really so terrible for you to remove it or make it private? I think the bigger question and red flag is his reasoning. I'd take the video down for now, but demand a larger conversation around why it's basically being fake to his new family. What does it mean the fiancé and her family are conservative? Why would dancing at a wedding be trouble but divorced with kids isn't? Or is it a problem? Does fiancé and her family know his full situation? And what does conservative mean to their lifestyle? Will there be expectations around how the kids have to act or what they can and can't do at his house once he's married? Things they aren't expected to do or believe now? To me, his reasoning for wanting the video gone raises a lot of questions about future expectations with a stepmom and stepfamily possibly involved. You're the a-hole. I don't think he actually needs a reason. If someone asks you to take down a picture slash video of them, then you should. Unless you have a good reason to keep it up. I don't really see what you gain from keeping it up, and it clearly hurts him and damages your relationship with a parent of your children. I think hurting him is what she is gaining. I think it's okay for her to keep it for herself, but sharing that video on social media when he clearly said he didn't want to be seen, that should be a simple, oops, sorry, let me take it down. You're the